Many years ago, I watched the television adaptation of the drama The Miracle Worker. It's a compelling story of two females of great resolve, Helen Keller and Ann Sullivan. Helen was born in 1880 at the age of 19 months. She contracted an illness that left her blind and, and deaf and mute. Annie was a young, partially blind teacher who had been brought to the Keller, Alabama farm to serve as Helen's teacher. Helen's brother tried to convince Annie to quit and go home. There's such a thing as defeat, he told her, and no hope. Annie's face tightened at the thought. And she turned away from Helen's brother and she walked toward the bed where young Helen was sleeping. And in the film, she dropped to her knees and drew her face close to that of the young girl. I won't let you, she told Helen. No pity. I won't have it on either of us. If God didn't mean for you to have eyes, I do. This world is not something to be missed, I know. And I won't let you be till I show it. Till I put it in your head. Helen was just as stubborn as her teacher. Locked in a frightening, lonely, dark world, she often misinterpreted Annie's attempts. The result was a battle of wills. Over and over, Annie pressed sign language into Helen's palm, and Helen pulled back. Annie resisted. Annie persisted, and Helen resisted. And it was a battle of two strong personalities. But finally, in a moment of high drama, there was a breakthrough. One day in the barnyard, during a fevered exchange, Annie had placed her hand in Helen's hand and was spelling out the word water. With her other hand, she was holding... Helen's hand beneath a flowing spout of water. Over and over, Annie spelled out W-A-T-E-R. Helen pulled her hand back. W-A-E-T-R. Helen pulled her hand back. W-A-T-E-R. And finally, Helen stopped. And she took her hand and placed it in Annie's hand and spelled the letters back. W-A-T-E-R. Annie Sullivan took Helen's hand and placed it on Annie's cheek and nodded up and down vigorously and said, Yes, 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 W-A-T-E-R. She led Helen around the barnyard, spelling anything and everything she could touch. G-R-O-U-N-D. They touched the ground. P-O-R-C-H, they touched the porch. P-U-M-P, they touched the pump. It was a breakthrough. And every occasion, Helen spelled it back. And finally, there was communication between teacher and child. Helen got it. Christmas is this moment for us when we get it. When God breaks through, we indwell a Helen Keller world. Our sight is limited. Our hearing is muted. Our understanding is constrained and restricted. Try as we might to see what we long to see. We can't see it. We're surrounded by a world that is beautiful, blazing and shot through with God's glory and goodness. We have a heaven that awaits us. We have a heavenly Father who cares for us. But because of our restrictions, because we were born into this world that is limited in sight and sound, it, we just don't get it. But there is a deep longing within the heart of every human being. There is a deep desire within the heart of every single one of God's children 
And there is this sneaking suspicion that we were made for more than that which we can see. And God is every bit as persistent as Annie Sullivan, even more so. He is determined to break through. He comes bringing words, spelling it out for us. And in the ultimate breakthrough, he himself entered our world and began teaching us words and the meaning thereof that we had never seen before. L-O-V-E. L-I-F-E. H-O-P-E. Many people are resistant, stubborn, unwilling, for whatever reason, to believe or trust. And they settle for a small, dark world. But every so often, there is a breakthrough. The Bible calls this a conversion. It's it's a conversion of, of openness from a dark world to a bright world, from a world of no sound to a world of great sound from a world of this world to a world of God's world. This is what happened to the shepherds that night. They got it. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Suddenly there was an awareness that the Lord had spoken to them. And they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. All of a sudden they could see. All of a sudden they could hear. These ordinary shepherds were ordinary no more. Why? Because God had broken through and they had seen Jesus Christ. This was the goal of God in this moment. This was the miracle that he longed to accomplish. And that is that the shepherds would see not just the angels, not just the miracles, but that they would see Jesus Christ himself. Why? Because here's what the Bible says about Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God. For it was the Father's good pleasure for all of the fullness to dwell in him. To see Jesus is to see God himself. And to see Jesus is to see the one who has been sent to teach you the language of heaven. To see Jesus is to experience the only real breakthrough in life that matters. To meet the one who says those longings in your heart are right. That you were made for something more than this life. And all of that happened on Christmas at the advent or the coming of Christ. I long to do something remotely similar for my little girl, Jenna, when she was six years old. I don't know about you, but I had a tough time letting my kids go to school. Seeing them go off to elementary school was hard on me. Jenna was ready for first grade, but her dad was not. And I remember when the kids assembled on the playground for the first day, most of the parents left, but I didn't. And when the teacher said it was time for the parents to leave, she was looking right at me. (laughs) It was hard to leave, so hard, in fact, that I did not. (laughs) The teacher led the students into the schoolhouse, into the building. And unbeknownst to the teacher and unbeknownst to Jenna, I snuck around and I crept down the hallway. And I stood outside of the door, the closed door of Jenna's first grade class. And I peeked in the window. And when I did, Jenna saw me. And her chin began to quiver. And her eyes began to fill with tears. 
and everything inside of me wanted to run in and rescue her from the evil bowels of education. <laughs> and I had this crazy thought. I thought, you know, if only I could become a first grader. If only I could remain with my adult awareness and take on the form of a six-year-old boy, redheaded and freckle-faced, and just sit at the desk next to hers. And at some point, what a joy it would be to lean across and tell her, Jenna, I'm really your dad. <laughs> and whenever she struggled with math, I could help her. Whenever she had trouble with spelling, I could say, oh, I learned those words. I'll help you. And whenever those little boys flirted with her, I could whack them around the time <laughs> or two. I couldn't do that, but God could. Do you not understand? Dear child of God, that the presence of Jesus on earth and the ongoing presence of his spirit in your heart is the message of your heavenly father saying, I am with you. I will walk you through this. You are not alone. There is more to this world than meets the eye. And if you listen if you listen very carefully through the blessings and through the burdens of life, he is teaching you H-O-P-E, L-O-V-E, L-I-F-E. Helen Keller was never the same after that day in the barnyard when she learned to sense the message of her teacher. May you do the same this Christmas. He is speaking to you, and you don't want to miss what he has to say. Let's pray together. Gracious, holy, heavenly Father, we are people who settle for so little when you offer so much. Grant today that we might open our eyes, open our ears, Hear the message that you're telling. Hear the words that you're spelling. And show us, dear Heavenly Father, what it is you're saying. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all the church said,